Hello, this lecture will be on the respiratory system. As usual, you can uh, find this uh, transcript of this uh, lecture on my website, www.alexstang.org or in the Moodle. So we are going to consider uh, the respiratory problems in children. Okay, so uh, what this lecture would mainly just uh, give you an overview of respiratory problems. Okay, so again, uh, what I'm going to do is to highlight a few important problems that you know, and then you go, you will take time to read about it on your own. Okay, I cannot. I will not give you all the details. I just highlight to you the important aspect so that you know which part of the respiratory system is important and which part you need to know well. Okay, if you recall, I talk about the major causes of death in children less than five years of age. And you find that in uh, pneumonia is still about 90, almost 20%. Okay, in children of uh, less than uh, five years. So resp the respiratory system is actually very important. And if you go into private practice and if you run a GP clinic, you find that children with cough and cold or respiratory problem make up a major part of your clientele. Okay, so you, uh, here is a sort of uh, outline on the how do you examine the respiratory system. Okay, again, you have to remember that we are dealing with children. Okay, these are children are not mini adults. Okay, that's why in peace you always deal with children according to their age. So you may have can use a percussion on the adolescent, but please don't percuss the chest of a premi. Okay, you may cause some pneumothorax or something. So that means in pits, you have to adjust your examination method to the age of the child and the size of the child. So you may not be able to go in the order that you're used to. Yeah, you may just have to start with observation first and then, uh, then you can touch the child. Because once the child starts crying, I don't think you can hear anything. In children, we always think about the age age of a child because different infective agents are, are prevalent in different age group. For example, if you're talking about a newborn, okay, first we will think of group B strep because these are very common. You find that group B strep is very common in children, especially in neonates. So it's so something for you to read about. One to three months chlamydia, RSV, uh, Pertussis are important. Two to five years, we talk about respiratory uh, viruses, pneumococcus, hemophilus influenza. And then for the older age group, we think of uh, mycoplasma, think of streptococcus, influenza, and RSV viruses. So you see that different age group, you must consider different uh, bacteria or different infective organism, and that will lead to different uh, antibiotics or antiviral agent. Okay, so we we'll start with the throat. What are the, some of the issues with the throat? Here you can see that the child has very severe uh, tonsillitis with uh, adenoid. Okay, so there's tonsillar adenitis. There's swelling, fever. Okay, you can see that the, there is a pseudomembrane and the uh, enlarged uvula, and the, the tonsils are enlarged, more we call the uh, strawberry uh, type of uh, tonsils. Okay, this child presents with uh, ulcers in the throat. Okay, and then you exam examine the hand and the feet, you find that you will also get uh, ulcers there. So this is hand for the mouth. This is, okay, go back, read about it, because it's very, a common condition that you can have. 
again, you have uh, tonsillitis, you have uh, uh, almost uh, like a, a geographical uh, type of uh, tonsils, and you can see that there are different grades for the tonsils. So you can read more in detail on your own. Yeah, this is the case of uh, diphtheria. You can see that there is swelling, but gross uh, pseudomembrane. Okay, this is a membranous formation due to the slouching off of the tissue and a thickening, thickening of the walls. Okay, and you, this is the autopsy, and you can see that actually there is a destruction of almost the whole oral pharynx, getting past the tongue and extending back, almost reaching the trachea and the esophagus. This child presents with fever, fever for about five days, complaint of difficulty in swallowing. Okay, no hoarseness of voice. So, what were the things that come to your mind? No. You have to consider that uh, if you have a fever and sore throat, then you have to look at the uh, epiglottis. This is epiglottis. So if you have epiglottitis, then you see that you will have a thumb sign here. There's no, but you see that there is a widening of the space between the vertebra and the uh, back of the throat. So it seems to extend upwards. Okay, so this is a retropharyngeal abscess. Okay, so what's the treatment? Okay, go and read about it. What are the some of the things we are uh, in the nose? I think I've mentioned that the most children have a nasopharyngeal colonization of a, a strep pneumonia, so they can spread and they're carriers. So when you talk about that. And you find that children, especially in the preschooler age, uh, carries a lot of bacteria uh, on in their nose. Okay? And it decreases as they grow older. Okay, so you find that uh, you should know how many, what are the sinuses, okay, and what, what are the common uh, indication and read all about the sinusitis. You find that. It's a pus field sinusitis. You can see that normal, you would, in a, this is a sinus, normally it will be black because of air. But here you see that there is actually mucus filling it. You see the nose, there seems to be the enlarged turbinates. Okay, the uh, MI sinus. Okay, so this is sinusitis. And this is a child with a brain abscess, secondary to sinusitis. So sinusitis is not just uh, infection. In children, it can lead to brain excess. Okay. So you now you remember the triangle, the eye and the mouth. Okay. Where does blood drains? The other thing in children is that every time you examine a child, you look at the throat, but you must also look at the ear. Because otitis media is a very common uh, occurrence in children. Why? Well, because the station tube is very uh, short. So every throat infection will end up with a ear infection. That's why every examination of a child, you must look at the ear, you look at the tamponade membrane, see whether it's swollen, it's uh, painful, okay, uh, it's inflamed. So always, Look at the nose and the throat. Okay, how about the larynx? Okay, here you can see that there is a stenosis or uh, of the larynx. Okay, this is the vocal cord. Okay, this is secondary to intubation. Okay, but normally you find that this is more common. Okay, child presents with stridor and a barking cough. Okay, high fever. But otherwise, the child is quite comfortable except for the stridor. And if you look at the 
throat, you do an X-ray. Okay, I don't recommend you doing X-ray for all, all of this, but if you can see actually a narrowing or a stiffer sign. Okay, this is uh, acute laryngeal tracheal bronchitis, LTB or croup. Now croup is actually uh, infective, okay, and the child sometimes are in distress, sometimes are not. In the former own days, we have this style of tent, what we call croup tent. Where we put the, the patient inside with the mother and we uh, give them uh, uh, humidified air so that the secretion doesn't block and nowadays we don't do that okay nowadays uh, we treat them with certain medication and then uh, we try not to do x-ray because every time we do the x-ray and usually for croup we do a lateral neck Okay, it can cause a laryngeal spasm. Okay, and then you have to intubate. So we try not to do x-ray because then they will irritate the child, the child will cry, then you go laryngeal spasm. So you can actually diagnose uh, croup or LTB by the clinical features. Okay, and the antibi the organisms, antibiotics, I leave it to you, you to read more about it. Then we have the chronic uh, stridor. Laryngeal malaysia. Laryngeal malaysia is actually a child is wheezing since birth, and you find that there is indrawing of the subcostal and costal uh, uh, area, but the child is actually quite comfortable. Okay, and uh, you can reassure the parents that oh yeah, by six months or so, when the cartilage hardened. Okay, so you have to read out about laryngeal malaysia. Why does the stridle occur? And what is the thing? Uh, long term circulation. Okay, this is a child with a uh, epicoditis. Come out with came with fever, stridor. Okay, and you can see that this is the thumb sign. Okay. So read out about epicoditis or the trachea. Okay, one of the worst conditions that can have is tracheitis. And you can see that the trachea is all inflamed. They tend to be very severe, very toxic looking. And they, they may have slouching and uh, corrosion and may have perforation. An x-ray will show that there is thickening, there is also a deviation. So that is tracheitis. And you see that it's all inflamed. Now as you go down, as you look from the trachea, as you go down into the bronchus, you can see that some of the children, they will come with just barking cough. Okay, and you find that the bronchus is uh, swollen. Okay, and you can see that the bronchus, the tertiary bronchi is actually a uh, swollen thickening of the mucosa. And there is actually, uh, you can see that these are the enlarged bronchus. Okay, some of it, you just think of it a three dimension. Some of them is seen sideways, some of them is in cross section. Okay, and then bronchitis. Bronchitis is actually more common in children. You find that the small airways are inflamed because of and the mucosa thickening and the, uh, a lot of secretion. So they are wheezing and they have slight, uh, slight subcostal in, in costal recession. Okay. Not all of them are sick, some of them are quite happy. So we like this little fellow here. So we call it this the happy visas. Okay, so bronchitis is a caused by a viral. So think about bronchitis, especially uh, in a very small child, okay, less than three years old. Don't think of uh, asthma, think of bronchitis first. Okay, go back and read about bronchitis, the treatment, the uh, and the management. Then we talk about pneumonia. Okay, this x ray shows that you must know how to describe an x ray adequately. This x ray shows that there's collapse constellation of the upper loop, most probably due to aspiration. Okay, and then you see that there is this x ray that shows that uh, there's collapse constellation with pure effusion. And uh, the same one you do uh, uh, ultrasound, 
can see the cystic formation and you do a CT scan. Okay, we are doing more and more CT scan for pneumonia, especially at the present uh, COVID-19. You find that they go into uh, respiratory distress syndrome and then uh, diagnosis actually by a, a, a CT scan of the lungs is more accurate than by a, a, a PCR. Now, sometimes you see in pneumonia, you may have uh, air cells in this. This is a nematocele. Okay, so nematocele's are uh, uh, quite distinctive for staph aureus of infection. Okay, sometimes you see uh, this is a chemical pneumonitis okay, caused by uh, aspiration of a kerosene. So kerosene is a chemical pneumonitis. Okay, and then uh, so pneumonia is quite common. So you need to read all about pneumonia, and then you can see that uh, this is a ball valve effect caused by aspiration. Now children always think of aspiration, especially if you hear stridor or you have a, a, a sort of a persistent uh, air trapping. Because children tend to swallow all sorts of things and then they choke on it and it goes into the lungs. This is a, a very severe uh, motorex with a uh, moving of the mesosternum. And of course, we mustn't forget TB as a uh, important part of our study. So read all about TB, TB in children, and what is the treatment management of TB. And this is the tuberculin test. How, read about it. How, how do we measure it? Now, cystic fibrosis is quite rare Okay, in our in Malaysia. You may, if you work in Australia or European countries will be more common. So it's good to read about that too. And of course, uh, childhood asthma is another big topic that you must read on your own. Okay, well, all about asthma, especially the treatment, management, long term, what are the SAVA, LABA, okay, airway, uh, that, all these things. No? I wish you happy reading for that. And what is the treatment for that? Bronchopulmonary dysplasia is actually, uh, uh, these are the, some of the pictures for Saba. This is bronchopulmonary dysplasia due to uh, lung damage in, in pre-major baby. They are ventilated with a very high pressure. Okay, and respiratory failure, some uh, things to read about, causes of, okay. So what are the causes of cough and breastness in children? Okay, so something to read and hope that you will have, you see the light at the end of the tunnel.